How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate guide to increasing your FPS on the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Beta. Most of the settings shown with inside of this video will also correspond to the game when it fully releases, so do check the channel if you are watching this video for the updated, full released version of the guide when the full game releases. For now I'm going to be showing you guys quick, easy and effective steps to ensuring that you're getting the best FPS with inside of the beta, regardless of your system specs, ranging all the way from ultra low end to the best gaming PC hardware available at the moment. This video is going to be helping you guys achieve the very best FPS possible, helping in fixing any stuttering issues you might be experiencing with inside of the game, and reducing your input latency for a fast, snappy and responsive feeling game. If you guys are happy with the results at the end of this video, please do leave a like on the videos, it does help me out tremendously. Alongside let me know of your results and your thoughts on the beta in that comment section down below. And if you guys do enjoy this sort of content and wish to stay up to date with the latest version of the guide once the game goes live, please do consider pressing that subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly whenever a video goes live on the channel. With all that said and done, let's get straight on into the video. To kick off with the game optimizations, we're first of all going to be going into the battle.net launcher, navigating down to Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, navigating up to the options menu, clicking this once, then going to show in Explorer. This will then bring you to the installation directory of your game. Double click on the folder to go inside of the game files. We're going to be first of all navigating down to the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War launcher, right clicking, going down to properties, going over to compatibility, ensuring that disable full screen optimizations has been checked, then go down to change our DPI settings, override the high DPI scaling behavior, select OK, press apply, and then press OK. We're then going to be repeating that step for the Black Ops Cold War application found here. So once again, right click on the application, go down to properties, go to the compatibility tab, disable full screen, change high DPI, override high DPI, press OK, apply and OK. We can then go ahead and exit out of the installation directory files. That's applied a very quick and easy optimization to the game application settings themselves with inside of Windows, denying Windows from applying basic full screen optimizations to the game in which many cases can actually reduce FPS and increase input lag. We're now going to be covering some basic optimizations and some of which I recommend not just for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, but for every game you play. This now leads us on to the most important step within inside of this video for achieving the best FPS possible and fine tuning our in-game settings to set up the game either towards completely potato low end textures with everything off, or if you're looking to keep high end settings and just receive a decent FPS boost, this is the most important step. For this step, we're going to be downloading a bunch of configs in which I've compiled in the description down below. So just simply click on one of the config download links, download the file and place it onto your desktop. Once you've got the file on your desktop, right click on the file. You should then see the option for extract here. If you do not have the option to extract here, just simply go over to Google and download 7-zip or WinRAR, install it to your PC. You should then have the option to extract here. Once you've extracted the file, you should then be met with a folder on your desktop with an identical name. Go inside of the folder, you'll then be met with four folders with inside of here. Each of these folders contains the config in which is described in the folder name. For instance, if you're on a medium end PC and you want competitive settings which keep a medium setting standard, go with the medium end config. If you're on a low end PC, go with low end. And for me and for those of you who are looking to get the best FPS possible and don't care about how the game looks, you just want every single frame, I'm going to be going with the everything off low end potato best competitive settings. So click on the folder which best represents the setup you're going for. Once you've clicked on the folder, you'll then be met with a config settings to copy text document. You then need to go ahead and double click on this text document which will open up in notepad and these are going to be the settings we're going to copy all the way from the top from slash slash frame cap we're going to be highlighting and dragging all the way down to the bottom ensuring that everything has been copied right click then select copy once the settings have been copied, you can simply exit out of this notepad, exit out of the configs file provided. We then need to go ahead and actually paste those config settings into our existing config for the game. For this, you need to navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, navigate up to Documents. With inside of Documents, scroll all the way down to the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War folder, go inside of Player Beta. You'll then be met with a config file, double click on this config file. Once the config file has opened up, we need to make sure that we keep some information with inside of here which is unique to your config. So we're simply going to be scrolling down to where it says Gameplay. This this is where you'll be seeing the start of the settings in which we copied. So what we're going to be doing with inside of this config is simply highlighting everything below this and simply pressing backspace to delete it. Once your config looks similar to this and you have no settings underneath this, right click, then select paste. Paste in those brand new settings, then navigate up to the top left hand side, select file, then save. We're then going to go ahead and right click on this config then select copy. You'll then have a folder with a bunch of random numbers at the top of your player beta folder. Go inside of this folder, right click in the blank space, select paste and replace the file with inside of this destination. Once you've then copied that config into this folder as well, we can then go ahead and exit out. It's also worthwhile taking the opportunity to remind you that there are brand new GPU driver updates for both Nvidia and AMD graphics cards. So regardless of how old your graphics card is or how frequently you update the GPU drivers to them, ensure that you are running on the brand new updates for both of them. These are fast, free and easy to get hold of and you can see which graphics card you have installed to your system by right clicking on your desktop we'll be either seeing the nvidia control panel or the amd
AMD Radeon settings panel. To update your GPU drivers to the latest ones, you'll then navigate inside of the description down below and click on the corresponding link, whether you found an Nvidia graphics card or an AMD Radeon graphics card. Click on your corresponding link. For Nvidia users, you'll be brought to this webpage found here. Go to the automatic driver updates utility, select download now, download this utility, it will then get you up and running on the latest graphics card driver. For those of you running on AMD, it's a very similar process. Click on your link, you'll be brought to this web page found here. Scroll down to the auto detect and install Radeon graphics drivers for Windows tab. Go down to download now, install the utility, it will then get you up and running on the latest driver. Upon installing the latest graphics card driver to your system, you can squeeze extra performance out of it very simply, easily and safely by right clicking on the desktop and opening up inside of the Nvidia control panel or AMD Radeon settings panel. For Nvidia users, you'll first of all navigate up to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview ensure that the middle option titled use the advanced 3d image settings is selected then apply that setting then navigate over to manage 3d settings with inside of here image sharpening is a feature i definitely recommend having enabled if you do wish to enable this feature turn it to on set the sharpen to 47 percent and press ok for the rest of the settings with inside of here i'd recommend pausing the video looking at every single one of my settings and matching them to your settings resuming the video as i scroll down pause the video once again copy all of the settings in which you can and once again just continue that step until all of the settings shown on screen here have been applied to your control panel. Once that's done, go to the bottom right hand side and press apply. For those of you running on an AMD Radeon based graphics card, navigate inside of the AMD Radeon software panel. Navigating up to the top left hand side, going to gaming. With inside of here, go to the looking for global settings, then navigate inside of the global graphics tab. With inside of the global graphics tab, we're going to start off by enabling Radeon anti-lag disabling Radeon Chill, enabling Radeon Image Sharpening and setting this to about 60%. You can lower this if this does look too sharp for you. Navigating down to Wait for Vertical Refresh and setting this to Always Off, then navigating down to Advanced. Anti-aliasing should be set to Use Application Settings, anti-aliasing method should be set to Multi-Sampling, Morphological anti-aliasing should be disabled, Anastropic filtering should be disabled, Texture filtering quality should be set to Performance, Surface Format Optimization should be set to Enabled, Tessellation Mode should be set to AMD Optimized, OpenGL Triple Buffering disabled, GP workload should be set to graphics, and we're then good to go. Apply those settings and exit out of the AMD Radeon software panel and continue on. Whilst closing off with the GPU optimizations, I'm going to take this opportunity to quickly remind you that I have a GPU overclocking guide, which is incredibly fast and easy to follow along with. You can see some fantastic gains on pretty much every single game you play from around about five to 25% FPS increases across the board without having to spend a penny and using about 20 minutes of your time. You'll educate yourself on GPU overclocking and find out how to get the best performance possible for the graphics card and PC in which you've paid for and unlock its full potential. You can find the video in the card on the top right hand side of the screen now alongside in the description down below we'll be finding that video and other videos in which I'd recommend following along with if you're looking to get the best performance possible out of your PC and fully optimize it for gaming and other heavy workloads. This now brings us on to the last and final step within inside of this video and arguably one of the most important. You can skip this step if you wish to do so and jump straight into the game now and see what your FPS results are like but for those of you looking to get the best results possible and the best feeling game possible navigate down to the description down below and navigate to the link titled ISLC. This will bring you to this web page found here for the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a two-in-one optimization program. The first part of the program allows you to free up excess RAM in the background, keeping a reserved pool of RAM constantly so you don't run into any bottlenecks. And the second part of the program comes in the form of the timer resolution application, which can help lower the input latency between your operating system, hardware you have installed, and the game itself for a much snappier and faster feeling game by reducing input latency and improving FPS. To download and use the program, it's very simple and easy to do. Scroll down to the bottom until you find the official download here link. Click on this button. The program will then be downloaded. Simply go ahead and open up the program. Select the directory for this to be extracted to, so I'm going to be setting my desktop, then select extract. The folder will then appear on your desktop. Go inside of the folder and open up the intelligence standby list cleaner program. Once the program opens up, we need a minor bit of setup. For the first box, you're going to set this to 1024. For the second box, this needs to be set to roughly half of your system RAM or memory. You can find this number for yourself at the top of your screen. For me, I have 32,000 megabytes, so roughly half of that is going to be 16,000. So roughly half your number. Navigate over to the right-hand side to wanted timer resolution. Set this value to 0.50. Then check the option for enable custom timer resolution. We can then go down to the bottom right hand side, click on start, then go up to purge standby list. As you can see, clicking that button for me has actually freed up 6.6 gigabytes of RAM which was currently in use on my PC and has flushed that out completely. I'd recommend keeping this program open whilst playing games, so minimize out of the program. All there is left to do now is to simply close out of all programs you don't need running whilst playing the game. So exit out of your browser, exit out of any software you don't need, keep your voice application open and boot into the game. After installing and setting up our config files correctly, we're then 
going to be booting into the game so we can go ahead and fine tune our in-game settings to tailor them towards your personal preference and the level of detail and FPS in which you wish to achieve. For this just simply boot into the game. Once you've booted into the game don't pay too much attention to how the game looks as we're going to be fine tuning that now. Navigate to the bottom left hand side and go inside of your settings menu. With inside of here we can start off by going up to the graphics tab found up here in the top. For display mode we're going to be setting this to full screen. Refresh rate should be set to the highest available option for you. Gameplay vSync should be disabled. Menu vSync disabled. Render resolution. On the right hand side there's going to be some recommended render resolution settings in which I'd recommend setting depending on your system specs. This is a very good option to play around with and at the end of the video if you're still not 100% satisfied with either your visual quality or the FPS in which you are getting, do change around this option by lowering it if you wish to achieve better FPS and increasing it if you wish to get a better visual fidelity. The maximum this should be set to is 100%. For me I personally like to set this down to 90. For display resolution, I'd recommend setting this to your monitor's maximum resolution. Aspect ratio, colorblind type, field of view, ADS field of view, and brightness are all personal preference, so we're going to be skipping these options. Just set these up how you like them. This then brings us down to frame rate limit. You can choose to limit your FPS if you wish to do so, but for most people watching this video, if you do have the NVIDIA Reflex option available to you, which we'll be going over later on, I would recommend keeping this to unlimited. This then brings us down to details and textures. Texture quality for the best FPS should be left on lowest. Otherwise, if you want good looking textures still on a high end gaming PC, go with medium at the highest. Texture filtering quality should be set to low. Model quality I'd set to medium at the highest. Special effects quality medium. Screen space reflection should be disabled. Object view distance, again if you want the best FPS go with low, otherwise go with medium. Volumetric lighting should be set to low. Shadow quality should be set to low for the best FPS, otherwise use medium. Dynamic shadows I'd recommend keeping disabled. Special effects shadows disabled. Weapon shadow disabled. Navigating down to NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, if you do have this option available to you, if you have updated your GPU drivers, navigate over and turn this to enabled, boosted. This will make sure that the graphics card is achieving its boost clock for a longer duration of time, resulting in better FPS. Anti-aliasing quality, I'd recommend keeping this to disabled. If the game does look too sharp and too jaggy for your liking though, set this to low at the highest. Motion blur should also be disabled, subsurface scattering disabled, order independent transparency disabled, scrolling all the way down to the bottom, ensuring that CPU priority management is set to automatic. Once you guys have got all of those settings set up, navigate to the bottom and apply those settings. If you are still not happy with the visual fidelity and you would like to increase or decrease the visual fidelity of your game, the only options I would change around would be your texture quality, model quality, then scrolling down and changing around your shadow options, enabling dynamic shadows and special effects shadows. For the most part though, if you're looking to get the best balance of visual fidelity and FPS, I would follow the ones which were shown earlier. Once that's all been set up, if you'd like to see your FPS, server latency, packet loss and other information with inside of the game found up here in the top left hand side for me, you can enable these options by navigating over to the interface tab, scrolling down to the bottom, going to telemetry. This is where you can then enable any of those options to be displayed at the top of your game just by simply changing the option to shown. Once you guys are done with inside of there, simply boot into a game, see how the game looks and if you're happy with it, that's fantastic. If you're not, take yourself back over and change around the options in which were recommended to you earlier on. And there you guys have it. That is the ultimate FPS increase guide for the Call of Duty Cold War beta. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so you can be notified instantly when the full version of the FPS increase guide goes live for the full game featuring all of the new settings. Again, guys, if you are happy with this video, please leave a like on the video as it does help me out tremendously. And let me know of your results from this video and your thoughts on the beta in that comment section down below. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'm Pangino, and I'll see you in the next one.